Okay, we're going to give it one more minute, Daniel, and then okay. I'll kick it off here. Um, and then I'll add, I'll remove, my, I'll remove myself and add the other screen to the um, deck here. But you're going, to, uh, should I start the video or do you do that? You, you start the video. I'll let you start the video. And that way you can stop it. Hopefully that works. <laughs> <laughs> we will oh, see. Well, everybody, we always have a little bit of adventure around the, the, our uh, video or non-video thing. So I'm waiting just a couple more seconds here. Okay, I guess it's time to start. Hello, everybody. We're on to session two in the Cordoba room of uh, Pause for G. Um, thank you very much for attending. We are pleased to have a great presentation from Terrestris, uh, developed by Jan Suleiman, uh, uh, to talk about the current GeoStyler project. And our uh, Jan is away, so his colleague Daniel Koch uh, at Terrestris, um, he was a full stack developer um, focused on implementing geodata infrastructures. And a GeoStyler core developer will be um, playing a video and then answering Q&A. So I'm going to turn it over to Daniel to do that. OK, yeah. Thanks, Eddie, for a kind introduction. Um, Welcome to News from GeoStyler. Today, I'm going to present what happened within the last two years in the GeoStyler project since the last presentation here at the Phosphor-G. My name is Jan Suleiman. I study geoinformatics at the University of Münster in Germany, and I'm now working as a full-stack developer at Terrestris. There, we provide open source solutions for WebGIS applications, and we are located in Bonn, Germany. Also, I am a GeoStyler core developer. Today, we are going to talk about the concept behind GeoStyler, what gap it should fill, and what it actually does. And then we will talk about which new features were implemented and uh, which new projects occurred or came up within the GeoStyler community, and also what happened community-wise uh, in the GeoStyler community. And at the end, we will also give a short outlook of what we are planning for the future. Also, these slides are online, and the link to the slides can be found at uh, the end of this presentation. GeoStyler is a graphical editor for styling geodata. It is written in TypeScript and is based on the React framework. The core idea behind GeoStyler itself is that it, is or that it works independently from any existing styling format, so that it can work with for example, open layers, that it can work with SLD, that it can work with map files and any other formats that are already out there. To do so, we implemented a plugin architecture that provides several components that convert from these different formats and then can be plugged into the GeoStellar UI. As a side project or as a side result of this, we are now also able to convert different between different styling formats. More on that we will see in a minute. Here you can see one of our showcases of GeoStyler. This is uh, the GeoStyler demo. So this page is used for demonstrating the features of GeoStyler. Here you can see that we, for example, provide a tabular interface that uh, show different rules where each rule consists of a certain set of styling properties. So each line or each row within this table, a single rule that you kind of understand from the concept of SLDs. There you can provide, for example, detailed properties or specified properties for the styling output, as well as uh, provide filters, scale denominators, and many more. So that you do not have to uh, create all these rules by yourself. GeoStyler is also highly configurable. So you can use the different components of GeoStyler and put them, put them together in your own way. So here in this example, you can see on the right side that the rule table was broken down to only two columns, the preview and the name of the rule. Also, on the left side, uh, you can see that the symbolizer editor was also broken down to only support three styling properties. Usually, GeoStyler provides way more, but in this case, the application or in the application was just needed to um, support these three kinds of symbolization. In this example, we use uh, a different layout, so we moved away from the tabular layout and show a more space-consuming layout. Um, but there you have the benefit that you see all the information at a glance. There you can also see that you can provide, for example, the scale denominators and multiple filters, as well 
as a preview on the left side that already shows you uh, the style or how the style looks on, on the map. Here it is important to notice that GeoStyler is not an application. GeoStyler is a library that can be integrated into your own application. So you can tailor it just to, uh, to your needs. You can apply different styles so that it also fits into, your, into the concept of your whole application so that it fits seamlessly into your application. So let's take a look behind the scenes. GeoStyler is, uh, as we as I already said, with GeoStyler you can convert between different formats. Therefore, our plugin architecture expects a set of so-called parsers uh, that can be plugged into the application. Each parser is kind of a converter between any external styling format and our internal GeoStyler style. So each parser implements an interface consisting of two methods, the read style method and the write style method. With the read style method, you can convert an external format to our GeoStyler style, which by the way is not just another styling format that should be used anywhere. It is just meant to be an exchange format so that all the other styles can convert to the GeoStyler style and back so that we can properly fit it into our GUI and provide more, more benefit from it that you will see in a minute. Also, with the write style method, you can convert GeoStyler style uh, styles to any external styling format. So for example, if you want to support SLD, we can use the GeoStyle SLD parser, implement two methods, the read style method and the write style method, and then we are able to convert from SLD to GeoStyle style and back. So as a result, we would be able to take an SLD, convert it to GeoStyle style, and if we already have any GeoStyle style, we can now convert it back to SLD. Since every parser that we implement uh, follows the structure of read style and write style method, we can even go a step ahead. So, for example, if you want to convert from one style, external styling format, to any other styling format, we are now able to do this with GeoStyler. So in this example, we can use one styling format and convert it to GeoStyler style, and then use this GeoStyler style and convert it to another styling format. So with, the, with this example, you can see that you are able to convert, for example, map files to SLD. Therefore, you just need to use the GeoStyler map file parser that converts a map, style, a map file to a GeoStyler style. And then you can use the, Geo, the GeoStyler SLD parser to convert that GeoStyler style into SLD. As a result, you will see that it is now possible to convert a map file to SLD. Also, the other way around works as well. So you can also convert from SLD to map file. What happened feature-wise on the GeoStyler project? Now we are able to also support Chinese translations. So all the UI elements are translatable and uh, Chinese is now in the list of our supported translations besides German, English and Spanish. Also, we added some additional components. One of these is the preview map that not only shows the style for a single rule, but of the whole rule set. So now you can put in your an example data set and you will see how your style applies or the whole style applies to this data set. Also, we added a raster symbolizer and thereby support the styling of raster data. With this raster symbolizer, you, you have the usual methods of styling raster data. So that is a mapping between pixel values or existing pixel values to other pixel values. Um, here in this case, we also provide some means of classification to provide interpolated values to provide intervals and um, thereby simplify the use uh, for or simplify creating raster styles. Also, we have a new parser, that is the map file parser that we have already shown in the previous examples. This is the GeoStyler map file parser um, that allows to convert between map file styles and the GeoStyler style. And thereby, we are also able to convert between map file and any other supported style. So if we have a parser, you are now, or if we have a parser for a certain format, uh, you are now able to convert between map file and that certain format. For example, you are now able to convert to open layers, to SLD, 
TQG style and so on. This parser was mainly implemented by Balthasar Teuscher, who is also having a talk at this Phosphor-G. Or more precisely, he already had this talk yesterday. Um, I strongly recommend that you also take a look at this uh, talk as he gives more insights into the current state uh, of the map file parser and also shows uh, some really nice images where you can see what, uh, what features the map file parser already supports. We also implemented uh, the SOAP port for SLD version 1.1 in the GeoStyle SLD parser, and thereby we also support the symbology encoding and many more features of uh, the SLD 1.1 specification. More infos about that uh, can be found in the GeoStyler SLD parser repository. Regarding development, we also implemented type guards for our style interfaces. The style interfaces are the typings for the different sub properties of our GeoStyler style. So this helps developers who want to work on different parsers or want to create new parsers and that supports them and simplifies the way they can develop these parsers. What happened within our project? We have a new project that is called GeoStyler CLI or GeoStyler Command Line Interface. This allows for the automated conversion between different styling formats on the command line. So you can use this, for example, as a backend tool or as a tool for automated processing, using it, for example, in combination with a cron job to convert styles on a regular basis or also just for one time. This just works with uh, file-based styles. So let's take a look at how this works in detail. So here we now have set up a terminal and GeoStyler command line interface is already installed. And in this case, we have a set of input files. These are around 40 files with more than 44,000 lines of map file and we have an empty output directory. Now we can use the GeoStyler command line interface to convert these map files to, for example, SLD. Therefore, we type in the program name, specify our source format, in this case it's map file, specify the target format, which is SLD, and specify the output directory as well as the input directory. Thereby we can pass all of these files at once. Here you can see just within a few milliseconds, all styles were converted. Now we can take a look at the output directory and see that the same amount of files was created that are now that now have the file ending .sld since they have been converted. Now we can take a look at one of these converted styles and compare them to each other. So in the map file, you can see that uh, a scale denominator was provided as well as a filter expression and also some styling properties such as color and uh, width for the line. If we take a look at the generated SLD, you will see that also the filter expression uh, was converted to its um, representation SLD, as well as the max scale denominator and also the color values. If you take a closer look, you will notice that not all properties have been converted. This is based on the fact that currently we do not yet support uh, a 100% one-on-one conversion. We also provide a GeoStyler REST API, thereby you can convert between different styles via HTTP requests. That is especially useful for example, when you already have set up an application and you now need uh, the converted data. So instead of plugging it into the application, you have a separate endpoint that just uh, exists for transforming, transforming this data. And thereby you can easily integrate another functionality into your application. Also, we improved uh, our GeoServer GeoStyler community ex uh, extension. If we take a closer look at this, you can see that we now properly integrated GeoStyler into the styling editor of GeoServer. So now users can decide whether they rather want to use the existing code editor and write this SLD, for example, by hand, but also users can now uh, just use a GUI. So for people that are not that familiar with uh, the standard itself or just rather prefer to uh, use GUI editors, they now have the option to do this as well. 
let's take a look at what happened within the Geostellar community. We are happy to announce that Geostellar now is officially an OS Geo community project. Thereby we can benefit or be part of a bigger open source community and also can contribute to that bigger open source com or to that open source community by providing meaningful software. We also have a new website, uh, which is, can be seen on geostellar.org. There we provide information about the Geostellar project. We provide the documentation, links to the different repositories, and also tutorials on how to use Geostellar. Also, we moved all of our repositories to a dedicated organization that is called Geostellar on GitHub. There, now you can find all repositories that are related to Geostellar that have been implemented by the Geostellar community. We also would like to take the chance to uh, thank all of the contributors who helped improving Geostellar so far. So down below on the image, you will see just a small subset of those people who contributed to Geostellar. In this case, the, all these people made code contributions, but there are way, uh, many more ways to, to contribute to Geostellar. And we are thankful for every kind of contribution and for every person who would like to collaborate and improve Geostellar as a software. So let's take a look at what we have planned for the future. We were thinking about providing more styling or supporting more styling formats by implementing, implementing more parsers. So for example, we were thinking about creating a GeoStyler ArcGIS parser. This is still an ongoing discussion because this poses some problems uh, regarding the ArcGIS format. In case you're already quite familiar with ArcGIS and have, might have a few insights, we would really appreciate to get some information on that. Another idea we have is to support SLD expressions that comes with a SLD 1.1 specification. So instead of, for example, just providing hard-coded color values for any styling properties such as the fill parameter, we would be able to provide computed values that are based, for example, on feature properties or that are based on certain functions provided in the different backends on the different renderers and thereby we could strongly improve uh, the GeoStyler UI and the experience and the benefit for users that work with GeoStyler. We are also thinking about improving the label templating which is currently a little limited in its functionality and uh, we want to provide better means to users that they can uh, create more sophisticated label templates and so that they are able to display that information that they actually want to display. Also, we were thinking about windowless, uh, a windowless layout so that we move away from this window and window and window concept and provide a more, let's say, responsive layout uh, for GeoStyler. We also had the idea of uh, creating a QGIS plugin that enables the import and export of styles within QGIS. Thereby, users would be able to import, for example, styles that are and should not be supported by QGIS, and then edit their styles within QGIS, but also to export these styles into formats that they need for their applications. We are also thinking of doing a GeoStyler code sprint, and thereby having dedicated time to do some bug fixing, to implement new features, to create new ideas, and also to do some community building so that the GeoStyler community can even grow. Currently, we are in the middle of planning this code sprint, but it is still too early to announce a fixed date when this should happen. So if you're interested in participating in this code sprint, you might want to check out the GeoStyler homepage more regularly, or also take a look at our GitHub page. Also, if you're more interested in the topic of GeoStyler on this Phosphor-G, there are also other talks that pick up this topic and show different use cases of GeoStyler so as I have said before, Balthasar Teuscher uh, has a talk about the GeoStyler map file parser that shows the current state of this parser, but also Mark Janssen and Tel Adams uh, show a more sophisticated approach of how to integrate GeoStyler into a bigger software environment. And Mark Janssen and Christian Meyer uh, will also talk about the state of GeoX and how this integrates with GeoStyler. So if you're interested, you should also take a look at these presentations. So thank you for your attention. I hope you can get a brief overview of GeoStyler as a project and of the progress of the last two years. 
and hopefully you will check out GeoStyler and integrate it into your own applications. Um, if you would like to contribute, we are very helpful for any kind of contributions. There are many ways you can actually contribute. So for example, we are always in need of improving the documentation or if you find any bugs, things that uh, does not or do not work as they should, please leave us a ticket and uh, describe this bug. If you have ideas for new features, then please tell us what these ideas are. There's a high chance that these are pretty good ideas. And also even better, if you want to implement these features on your own, just contact us, create a pull request, create a new ticket. Uh, we are always eager to, to get information from the outside and to even extend the GeoStyler community. So again, thank you very much for your attention and enjoy the Phosphor G 2021. Great presentation there. Um, so um, Daniel Koch is going to be answering questions. The first one, uh, we have several, Daniel, was when translating from map file to mm -hmm. another style, can the map file have multiple layers? Uh, yes, that's possible. That's not a problem. Mm -hmm. It's supported. Um, how about where can one find documentation on the styling features supported for each respective converter? So there's no particular documentation uh, where I can read that from, but um, each parser has uh, an interface or can implement an interface or should implement an interface. And this interface supports a property that's called unsupported properties. And this can be filled in a particular parser, for example, in the SLD parser and or the open layers parser. And this one can then list all supported properties or more particularly the unsupported properties. So there is some kind of code documentation available. Yeah. Cool. Um, is writing out a style into a map server map file on the roadmap? Yeah, that's a good question because uh, maybe this talk gave them from, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the idea that is already possible, but it's not. So writing map file is not possible actually. But yeah, it is on the roadmap, but not with this high priority. So there are other th others uh, that Jan showed in the video, I, th I guess. So yeah, it's on the roadmap, but I cannot say when it will be uh, available or so. Okay. Um, is there a partial for grass GIS styles for vector raster data available in GeoStyler? Unfortunately, not yet. Um, is it possible to translate a Mapbox MVT vector style, a vector tile style to open layer style? Uh, basically, yes. Uh, the Mapbox, so there is a Mapbox parser available, but um, with some limitations. And um, yet it's possible to, to read the style to the open or to the geo styler style and then write it out to the open layer style. So yes, it is possible with some limitations. Um, can you create a map in QGIS and export a map file based on the QGIS project? So basically, yes, but uh, as already mentioned, uh, so reading in the QGIS or writing out the QGIS style into the GeoStyler style would be possible. So it is possible right now, but writing out a map file from the GeoStyler style is not possible at the moment. So it's not possible yet. But as soon as the map file um, writer is available, then it should be possible, yes. Mm -hmm. Good question. Uh, one more question here. What does currently happen when a map file or SLD file uses an attribute binding in its style? Um, it really depends on the implementation in the parser. So it, it could be supported by the parser, but uh, currently, for example, the SLD parser only accepts it um, in, the, in the label, so in the text symbolizer. Um, and somehow in the filters, of course, but um, so this, it really depends on the parser implementation. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that was, I think that's the last question that's come in from the audience. Is there, I, I, Jan touched on this, but anything else in particular you'd like to point out for people that are coming in the next uh, few releases of, you know, the system that they should, the people should be on the lookout for? So I think the uh, the most important or the most wished feature that is coming right now is uh, one in the SLD parser, and this is uh, writing out expressions and or expression functions. So this is so there's so a, um, a, a pull request available uh, as well, and uh, yeah, it 
this is a quite cool feature that is coming out in the next, hopefully in the next releases. Yeah. Excellent. Well, D Daniel, thank you so much. Thanks to Jan. That was, that really yeah. went well. It was great. Thank you uh, to Terrestris for the great work that you, you guys have done. And um, as you mentioned, there's a, a number of presentations here with, you know, that cover GeoStellar. So, you know, thank you so much. And um, we'll give everybody a break to get to their next uh, session. And we'll be back on at the top of the hour. Thanks so much, Daniel. Thanks to Jan for preparation. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.